Yeah. I'm pretty sure the UI in Hades 2 is giving us some pretty substantial hints as to how the story is going to play out here. I'm a witch assassin trained from youth with one mission, to kill the Titan Kronos, my grandfather, and rescue Hades. Which has some obvious parallels and contrast with her older brother Zagreus. All my aunts and uncles hated my father, so I ransacked his kingdom relentlessly until I got to my real family. Missing an arm from a battle already suffered before the game even starts, the scars she bears are both physical and emotional. She's been honed into a tool with one purpose. Now this happens in war. It's tragic. Yet, the cold reality is that soldiers are needed, and when victims are made, soldiers abound. You see, Melanoe's character design exudes danger and skill between her spectral arm with a visible skeleton, moon symbology with really wicked points, and her near effortless command of clearly very, very complex magic. It's what is required of me. I haven't any other option. Oh, so your innocent childhood was stolen from you by warlike conditions and you want to exact revenge while rescuing your only family we know is still around, right? Where are you going with this? Eventually, we will fight and defeat Kronos, but what happens when time dies? On every death, Melanoe escapes fate. Who's to say that Kronos couldn't do the same thing? Who's to say that it would even be right to kill Kronos? He is no mere titan. He is time itself. That sets us up thematically for not really wanting to kill him. And this is where the UI comes in and starts to give us hints about a different story than what we're being pitched at the start of the game. The UI needs to persist from the very first run you make until the 700th or so, whenever you unlock whatever true ending is awaiting for Melanoi. It needs to represent the different story beats as the character grows and probably represent the largest stage of that character's journey most heavily. It needs to represent where the player is going to be spending the most time, not just where she starts. Yes, the moon symbols have dangerous, wicked points, but also very gentle and robust curves. Her expression as she accepts boons from her relatives is almost worshipful, which stands in contrast to her older brothers, appraising the boons, almost as if they were a tool to be leveraged for his own ends. I suppose I was somewhat of a self-centered know-it-all. Whereas Melanoe has had the value of life literally beaten into her, she appreciates these boons as valuable in and of themselves, regardless of the impact they have on her mission. These spoons aren't just tools, they're beauty. Additionally, Zagreus's UI tends to be very boxy, with rigidly defined borders that are respected by all its children elements, with nothing moving outside. These large boon icons, for example, stay securely within the bounds of that parent box, reinforcing the theme of Zagreus trying to break free of his prison while coming to terms with living inside of it. In contrast, Melanoi's boon selections are notably different, with the icons natively living outside of their parent object. They break the borders of their container to make something entirely new. The right edge is no no longer a rigid line, but more of Melanoe's moon motif, drifting off like a flock of bats in the night. Zagreus has motifs of glory, honor, and power in the laurels and royal filigree scattered liberally throughout all of his screens, while Melanoe removes the trappings of worldly glory, leaving only symbols of her own power and open white space to explore it. If you look at my art, I wear my laurel just like the rest of my family. But oddly, it is absent in my UI. While Zagreus had his proudly displayed, Melanoe's story is not about glory or personal freedom, which are symbolized in the laurel. It's about leveraging her own power coming from that moon to end a war and build a brighter future. Even with all that power though, the icons for Melanoi's abilities tell a story that's very different from the one-dimensional battle assassin were pitched. Their round edges and almost bubbly appearance imply something softer, feminine, comforting, and elegant. 
all at the same time. Whereas Zagreus's were dynamically oriented on a sharp 45 degree bias. The sharp bowed lines you see also imply danger and strength. What's not to love? Going from Hades 1 to Hades 2, that difference would really only make sense if Melanoe is going to be going through some substantial character growth to come to understand herself. Perhaps she'll be a foil to Zagreus, who hated his father and was trying to escape hell with all his might. Melanoe will be descending into the depths of hell in order to rescue her father, who she only ever knew as a healthy family member, given the fact that she was born after the events of Hades 1, after the family had been knit together again. Now, in the pursuit of vengeance, she will probably discover things she didn't want to know about Hades, and must learn to reconcile these difficult truths with her hero worship of him. This could eventually lead to Melanoi realizing that the power she has is more than a tool to be leveraged by others, but rather something she must learn to exercise for her own sense of what is right, in order to help three generations of pet gods figure out how to live together. You see, in order to create incredible and compelling experiences in our games, we have to pay attention to every single part of the experience. The UI, as we're seeing in Hades 2, is masterful because it not only conveys information, it not only communicates how to play, but it communicates the narrative. 